Welcome to another Technical Tuesday episode. This episode, we are going to teach you three simple ways to sail faster. If you are not using one of these three simple techniques to trim your mainsail, you are not sailing your boat as fast and efficiently as you can. This means you're either not winning races or you're getting to your destination a little bit later than you should do. If, however, you're Ben Ainsley, part of the INEAS team and America's Cup skipper, or a professional sailor, skip on to the next episode. But for those of you who are learning to sail, this should be perfect for you, so enjoy. So let's talk about the basic anatomy of sails. The top of the sail is called the head, the back edge is called the leech. The front edge is called the luff, and at the bottom of the sail we have the foot. Now some more features of our sail which are really important for working out if our sail is driving properly. Firstly, canvas stripes, more on those later. The other thing that is really, really important are telltales. These are little strips of fabric which are sewn onto the leech of the sail, both the main and in our case, the Genoa, and they show you whether or not and how the air is flowing across that edge. Superbly important. Finally, the hawk. It is supremely important that you start relying on your hawk rather than your electronic instruments to make sure that your boat is sailing properly. I would always advocate some days just turning the electrics off and using nature to guide you. So when we look to trimming our mainsail, we really do need to understand the principles of sail twist and why sail twist is so important. As your boat sails along, the wind hitting the top of the sail is a little bit stronger than the wind hitting the bottom of the sail. For this reason, the top of the sail needs to be slightly looser than the bottom. This is where sail twist comes in. By using the main sheet, the traveller and the vang, depending on the point of sail, we can get air to move smoothly and drive the boat across all points of that mainsail. This will lead you to have an increase in speed. The main ways to assess twist are twofold. Number one, look at the sail. You can see the difference in position between the top and the bottom of the sail. The other one, yep, back to those telltales. Look to see if all the telltales are flying. So upwind, we need to use the main sheet and the traveller to control the twist. Aside from changing the position of the mainsail, this sheet also exerts a huge amount of force on that sail. By hauling the main sheet in, you pull the sail down. This exerts a downward force on the sail and it removes twist. It does this by closing the leech or flattening the sail a little bit and what you will find is that the tail tail will fall to leeward. So adjust the main sheet until the telltale, the upper telltale, flies fully from the leech of the sail. Then your twist is set. As a rule of thumb, this will occur when the upper camber stripe is parallel to the boom. Once you've set the twist, you can then use the traveller to adjust the position of the main sail to depower the sail if it becomes too windy or you have gusts, and at all times maintain the twist in the sail. Our traveller is located on the coach roof, but a lot of them are elsewhere, cockpits and at the stern. The traveller is normally kept in a central location. However, in lighter airs, you can move it to windward and in windier conditions, you can move it to leeward. All this is going to increase your boat speed. In light airs, this means that you can ease the sheet and keep the boom in the centre line position. Easing the sheet allows the boom to rise a little bit, thus maintaining the twist and driving the boat forward greater speed. Sailing downwind is slightly different. Once the boom has passed to leeward of the traveller, you need to use the kicker or the vang to control the leech tension and therefore the twist. So off the wind, by easing the kicker, you allow the boom to rise. This opens the leech and the twist increases. Contrarily, tightening the kicker will close the leech and decrease the twist. And you often need to adjust this because otherwise you'll get too much twist in the sail as you're sailing downwind. Again, make sure you look at those telltales. 
So for those of you who are now like, wait, what, what the hell just happened? What was that all about? It is really straightforward. You're on a sailboat, you pick the point of sail that you want to get to, and you adjust your main sheet first to get the twist set. Then once you've set your twist, you use the traveler to control the, the sail angle. Sailing downwind is slightly different because as you let the boom and the sail out, you have no effect on the traveler. This means that you have to control the twist of the sail using the vang or kicker. So what a lot of people do when they're starting to learn to sail is they use the main sheet to control the sail angle for at all points of sail and at all wind strengths. And while that is a really basic way of adjusting the angle of the sail to the boat and thus also the wind, it also means that you are changing the twist in your sail and losing performance. Now this brings me on to the next bit that I really do want to talk to you about, which is how do you assess the boat going faster? Now a lot of the time you just use the, the instruments, you use your log and you use the wind strength gauge, the anemometer, to work out what the wind strength and direction is. But there's a hawk, there's a hawk at the top of your mast which will show you the wind direction. And really you should, without going into all this Miyagi stuff, you should be able to feel the boat. You'll be able to feel the boat. Each boat is different and each boat has a groove, a groove where it's really happy. In modern monohull construction, there are chines on boats, so the boat will sit in a groove at a certain healing angle. We know Ruby Rose and I know exactly how you know, when she's happiest. So feel the boat, look for little increases in speed and look up at the sail, continually look up at your sails, look at your twist. If you're sat in a good helm position, you should be able to look at your main, your main sail and go, yeah, the twist is right. I can see that top, that top telltale flying perfectly. Take too much twist away, flatten the sail by pulling down too hard, you'll lose the twist. If that's wrong for this, the wind direction and wind speed, the telltale will fall. Similarly, put too much twist in and you, you will, again, you'll see the telltale fall and you're losing performance. So it's about making sure that you understand that twist occurs because the wind is stronger at the top of the sail or the top of the mast and is at the bottom and adjusting your sail accordingly. It's as simple as that. Number one, get your twist right. Number two, then play with the traveler and the vang to adjust the angle of the mainsail to the boat. Simple as. Now the second way that I can make you sail faster is by asking you to look at and adjust your leech lines. If your mainsail doesn't have leech lines, get some fitted. If you are ordering a mainsail when it comes to change your sails, ask your sailmaker to include low stretch leech lines. Those for us, we always ask for spectra because it is very, very, very hard wearing and very uh, low stretch. Now what are leech lines? They are small, in our case, I think they're four millimeter lines that run on the leech or the aft edge of the sail. They run through the sail and there is a small cleat. Um, there are cleats placed at every reef point actually um, that allow you to tension the leech uh, of our mainsail. Now, why would we need to do this? Because if you look up at a mainsail with an incorrectly tensioned leech, you will see that the upper edge is fluttering a little bit. Now that flutter means that you're not getting the drive from your sail that you need to. So what you do is go out on a moderately breezy day, not anything crazy, and look at the upper edge of your sail. If you see that it's fluttering a little bit, adjust your leech line, tension it slightly until that flutter stops. Also be careful not to over tension it. If you pull down too hard, you'll induce a curl into the back of your sail and that actually stops it driving. So a small adjustment and do it fairly regularly. In addition to this, keeping your mainsail, especially laminate sails, from fluttering too much extends their life. So using point two, adjustment of leech lines or inclusion of leech lines, you will find that one, you will go faster and two, your mainsail will last longer. Now the third way you can get your boat to move faster is to understand outhaul and luff tension. These are two separate things. The outhaul pulls the foot of the sail back and adds drive to the boat depending on the wind condition. The luff tension is adjusted by, in many cases on big boats, the adjusting the tension of the main halyard, but also it can be pulled down using something called a Cunningham. We don't have one of those, we only use our main halyard tension. Now, 
This is the reason that I was talking before about canvas stripes. A main cell has a maximum and a maximum draft that the sail maker will build into it to allow the sail to drive most efficiently. As the wind strength increases, the camber will move back. By increasing luff tension, you can pull that camber forward again. Think like an airplane wing. The actual, it's the front part of the wing that has the greatest thickness, and then it moves to the back to be more streamlined. And therefore, you should adjust your mainsail halyard tension to allow this. Once you've adjusted this, put little marks on your halyard to understand where the uh, luff tension is best for different upwind or downwind conditions. So by adjusting your halyard tension, looking at the camber and looking at your camber stripes, you will see where the maximum camber is, the maximum depth and adjust accordingly. And now I want to talk to you about the outhaul of your sail. In the lower end of the sails range, in lighter winds, you will find that a looser outhaul allows the sail to drive better. However, as the sail reaches its, its range, its working range, flatten the outhaul will give you a better aerodynamic shape and your boat will move faster. The other thing is by flattening the outhaul in heavier winds, you reduce weather helm. So these two things will allow you to steer faster, steer better, and the boat will go faster. So the third tip for us, work on your outhaul tension and look at your camber tension. Those three things will make you sail faster. So did you go any faster? Did those three methods help you sail faster? Let us know, put a comment down below. Also, uh, we are doing a fantastic offer with Precision Sales. So if by any chance you are interested in Precision Sales or a new set of sales, just click on the link down below. There is a special offer for all our followers. So hope you enjoy that. And we will be back with another sale trim video, this time dealing with your full sales. So enjoy that and we'll catch up with you soon. Cheers, bye bye.